Hello, my name is Khaled Koutini. I will be presenting our work, Low Complexity Models for Ecosexin Classification based on Receptive Field Regularization and Frequency Damping. This is a joint work with my colleagues Florian Henkel, Hamid Iqbalzadi, and Gerard Wedmer from the Institute of Computational Perception in Johanna Kepler University in Linz. We will start with a quick overview and introduction. Then we will talk about the CNN architecture that we used and the receptive field regularization technique. We will then talk about parameter reduction approaches to achieve low complexity ecosystem classification. We will present the results and then a conclusion. Recent advances in machine learning are mainly in deep learning, especially convolutional neural networks. They dominated the vision and audio tasks, as we can see in the DKS workshop and challenge submission. Acoustic thing classification, state-of-the-art models are mainly CNNs. The CNNs architectures are borrowed fully or, or in part from famous vision architectures like PGG and, Res uh, and ResNet, and they use uh, spectrograms as input. Unlike fully connected layers, a neuron and a convolution layer is only affected by a part of the layer input. This is what we call the receptive field. An input outside this receptive field doesn't affect the neuron activation or output. We also define the receptive field of the whole CNN is basically the receptive field of the last layer with respect to the input spectrograms. Regularizing the receptive field of CNN has shown to improve the generalization in different audio tasks, such as emotion and theme recognition in music and uh, acoustic sync classification. The top ranks on, in both acoustic sync classification tasks this year uses a receptive field regularized CNNs. High performing networks have millions, even billions of parameters, as we can see in vision in NLB with GPT-2 and 3, and even in, in audio and in DKS submission, we see always uh, large models and an ensemble of, of many models. But if you want to use these models in edge devices, then efficiency becomes very important. Memory and compute efficiency energy consumption and latency. We want the model to fit in the device memory and we want the inference to be in real time. So that's why there is a lot of literature about parameter reduction and model compression. In this work, we investigate approaches for low complexity acoustic sync classification. We base our work on receptive field regularized CNNs, the CBGQ submission to last year's DKS acoustic sync classification tasks. We propose a new receptive field regularization method and we investigate different uh, parameter reduction approaches. For the rest of the presentation, we will talk about receptive field regularization, and then we will talk about parameter reduction, and then we will combine them in some experiments and show the results. So the receptive field of a CNN is the field of view or the receptive field of the penultimate layer or the classification layer before the global average pooling with respect to the input spectrograms. You can calculate this maximum receptive field uh, based on the filter sizes and the strides of all, all the previous layers in the CNN and it's a recursive formula so the receptive field, uh, the RF of layer N is the RF of N minus 1 plus the kernel size of this uh, layer times the accumulative stride and the stride is also, uh, the accumulative stride is also a recursive by multiplying the strides of all the previous layer so we can see obviously if you increase the kernel size if you increase the strides, you increase the receptive field of the CNN. However, if you add layers with k with a kernel size of 1, this term cancels out, and then we, we keep the same receptive field of the previous layer. So each layer with a filter size of 1 doesn't increase the receptive field. And building on this uh, is how CB ResNet is built. We have a parameter row. This parameter can control how many 3x3 three three convolutions are in the network. So the, the basic structure of uh, architecture is starting by a 5 times 5 convolution, then 3 by 3 convolution and pooling, and uh, then this is followed by row 3 by 3 convolution, and the remaining layers are 1 by 1. That doesn't increase the receptive field. You can, of course, uh, see the details of the implementation in previous work or in, uh, on GitHub in our submission uh, to last year's DKs. So what RF regularization work is basically restrict the, recept the maximum receptive field of a CNN as it goes deeper. So we don't let the receptive field grow as the, the CNN goes 
deeper. These plots are from previous work of CP ResNet on three acoustic scene classification datasets, DK16, 17, and 18, accuracy uh, on bottom and loss on top. The x-axis is the maximum receptive field. We can see that increasing receptive field over time in orange has minimal effect on accuracy and loss, while increasing receptive field over frequency or over both dimensions increases the loss and decreases the accuracy across datasets. What's also important here is uh, if we increase the receptive field by adding pooling layers without changing the number of parameters of our network in red, the pattern is the same. As the receptive field grows, the performance of the network degrades. What we talked about so far is the maximum receptive field, but Lou and all show that CNNs do not use all the input inside their maximum receptive field, but actually they focus on the central part of the receptive field, and this is what they call the ERF. And you can calculate this ERF by backpropagating a gradient signal from the penultimate layer back to the input spectrograms. And this is what we show here uh, in white. This is the, if we backpropagate a gradient of, of a single output pixel back to the input spectrograms, this is what we see. And then you can see that the, the real effective receptive field is in red, while the maximum receptive field is in green. This is what brings us to our new receptive field regularization method, what we call filter damping. Filter damping works by multiplying the weights by a constant damping matrix, CN. This matrix is uh, constant, it's not learned during uh, training. The matrix sample is, uh, is the same, has the same shape as the filter. It has a value of 1 in the center, and this value decays over the frequency dimension, over the time dimension, or over both dimensions. And of course, it's repeated for all channels. Damping works by restricting the ERF uh, with no topological change in the CNN. So we don't need to change the filter sizes, introduce uh, booling layers. Uh, we just uh, multiply the filters by a constant matrix before applying the convolution. And you can see it as an inductive bias during training. It just makes fitting uh, the input uh, outside the center of the receptive field harder. Uh, during inference, you can just multiply the damping matrix uh, with the weights and therefore uh, no additional computational overhead is introduced. Here we show the test accuracy of CP ResNet on DKS18 acoustic scene classification dataset, the maximum receptive field or row values, and uh, in green we can see frequency damped, in orange we can see damped on both dimensions, blue is the baseline CP ResNet and red is time damped and we can see that in green the network outperforms the, uh, the baseline and furthermore uh, damping reduces the effect of increasing the receptive field on performance degradation so it degrade, the performance degrades less uh, when we use damping and this concludes the receptive field regularization part now we will talk about parameters reduction the first method for parameters reduction is width and depth restriction. Reducing width, which is the number of channels, and depth, which is the number of layers, is a very simple way to reduce the network size. Tan and Lee in Efficient Net paper uh, show that after you reach the optimal width of a network, increasing the width uh, more results only in minimal performance gain. But if we look at the of the of the weights matrix in a CNN, you can see that the matrix has the shape of C in times C out, the, the number of input channels times the number of output channels times the filter size over time and frequency. So C appears twice, and therefore the width C has a quadratic influence on, on the number of parameters. Uh, so increasing the width results in a quadratic increase in the number of parameters while adding layers grows the number of parameters linearly. Uh, the second method for parameter reduction is called decomposed convolutions. Decomposed convolutions are very similar to bottleneck layers, but with no activation function for the intermediate layers. You can see it as a singular variable decomposition for, for a convolutional uh, layer. We replace each uh, convolution layer with three. We first project uh, by one uh, times one filter to a bottleneck number of channels, we perform the convolution inside this bottleneck uh, number of channels and then we project back to the output channels. Uh, 
this uh, bottleneck is determined by z which we call the compression factor so we have this one convolution layer then a ReLU activation we replace it by a one by one convolution which projects to the uh, to a smaller number of channels we perform the convolution and we project back to the original uh, number of channels and then we apply the, the activation function here we have a z equals 4 and if we look at the original number of parameters is around 150k parameters but the three convolutions that we have all uh, together they result only in 17k parameters the last method for parameter reduction is called parameter pruning pruning is very well studied in the literature with the first paper uh, talking about pruning in 1988 uh, pruning works by starting with a network with full weights and then setting some of those weights, uh, the weights based on a criteria to zero. This will result in a network with very uh, sparse weights or few connections. A recent study comparing a different pruning method showed that uh, pruning uh, approaches performs very similarly uh, until a compression uh, ratio of 1%. Therefore, we use a simple magnitude pruning, which basically just set the lowest weights in magnitude to zero. But we do it uh, th uh, throughout training. At the beginning of training, we remove a large number of weights, and the number of uh, parameters uh, pruned decays exponentially in each epoch until we reach uh, the number, uh, the number of parameters required uh, by the end of training. This concludes the parameter reduction. Uh, approaches we will continue with the experiments and the results we use two data sets for our experiments the dks20 low complexity acoustic sync classification of task 1b of this year um, it has 40 hours of recording from 12 cities uh, classified into three classes we also use dks18 because it's uh, smaller from six european cities this allows us to do more experiments and analysis it has more classes 10 classes and this uh, allows us to differentiate in performance between uh, different approaches uh, first we compare damped uh, frequency damped with non-frequency damped cnns in different width settings we see that for different uh, width settings damped outperforms non-damped networks we also see that uh, having a smaller width hinders the, the CNN ability to fit the training data and, and therefore raises the optimal receptive field range. We see the same pattern for pruned and decomposed networks. Damped pruned outperforms non-damped pruned and damped decomposed outperforms non-damped decomposed in this figure. Here the, the radius of the, of the circle indicates the number of parameters and damped out, outperforms non damped for uh, all networks with the same number of parameters and we can see also that broad networks outperforms decomposed uh, networks and uh, looking at uh, all the reduction methods uh, together uh, we can see that um, uh, pruned convolution outperforms the remaining of the methods in purple we can see the, the baseline with a large number of parameters and we can say with pruning we can reduce this number of parameters a lot with minimal um, uh, minimal effect on accuracy if we look at uh, at networks below 500k uh, parameters for dks18 we can see that only pruning can achieve uh, minimal loss uh, in accuracy looking at the results of both data sets we can see that with damping and pruning we can outperform the CP ResNet baseline with a fraction of the uh, parameters in conclusion we analyzed various approaches for low complexity acoustic sync classification and found that pruning works the best we showed the importance of the receptive field uh, in low complexity settings. We showed that uh, damping is a very simple technique that we can use for receptive field regularization without altering the architecture. We showed that damping works to improve the performance, especially in low complexity settings. If you have any questions, please come to the Q&A session. And you can find the source code for our submissions in the GitHub links below. And thank you for listening.